In today's video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on this big shirt that I just sewed. I'm Sharon with Sharon Sews. Welcome to my channel, a channel all about sewing. I've been reading some articles from fashion magazines and watching some YouTube channels from some fashion bloggers to kind of get a feel for what spring 2021 trends are going to be. No surprise, we're trending towards comfort, which makes sense with our lifestyles right now. One of the trends that intrigued me was the big shirt trend. That oversized classic button down shirt is a trend that comes and goes in fashion. Sometimes it's been referred to as a boyfriend shirt. I've been seeing it referred to this season as the big shirt or the XXL shirt. What I like about this trend is you have a little bit of structure with the tailoring with your collar and your cuffs and your button front combined with the looseness of the oversized look. The pattern I chose to sew the look is Vogue 1744. Now you may have this in your stash because it's a re-release. Vogue rebranded it in 2020 as 1744, but it was previously released as Vogue 9360. 93601, I believe that was from 2019. So it's a fairly new release. It's a great little pattern actually. It's got a lot of variations. Uh, on the cover, you can just see the one view, and this is the view that I sewed. You have an option to just do the mandarin collar, you could do short sleeves, you can add patch pockets on the front, and you can, what was the other option? <laughs> oh, you can make it shorter. I personally like the long drama in the back of this shirt, and you could also add a tie belt. You could leave uh, side seams open and add your tie belt. Let me tell you about the fabric I used first. This fabric was gifted to me from Minerva.com. And when it arrived, I actually wasn't sure about the color. This is really not one of my colors. I haven't had my colors done since, what was it, the 80s when we were all into the colors, the winter, spring, summer. What am I missing? Winter, spring, summer, fall. <laughs> I guess fall's not my favorite. I think most of us instinctively know what works on us. We just know when we put a color on, our skin is brighter, our tone is brighter, we just look more refreshed. And this is a color that kind of washes me out. The voil fabric in this top works beautifully. I can wear it buttoned up or I could wear it, I think, open as a cardi. I think it'll be very versatile. The pattern is available in sizes extra small, which is a 4.6, to extra large, which is a 20.22. My shirt is a size medium, which is a 12.14. Typically, when I sew Vogue patterns, I start with a 12 or a 14 for a shirt or a dress to get a good fit in my shoulder and neck area. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while or reading my blog or watching what I post on Instagram, you know that I almost always need to do a full bust adjustment. That was not needed on this. I did zero alterations on this. And as you can see from the picture, there's plenty of room. I actually could have even sized down, but I wanted that big, loose feel. Fabric requirements for size medium for the view that I sewed are two and five eighths inch yard, 60 inches wide, which I didn't think was too bad. Now, the reason it takes so much fabric is not only because of the looseness, but because of the, the drama in the back. The pattern is rated easy. I don't really know what the criteria is for the big four pattern company on their pattern ratings. I don't know why something would be rated very easy, easy, average, or advanced. This one is rated easy. I would say it's pretty easy. I think if you are an adventurous beginner, you should be able to put this together. The instructions were okay. I sewed a lot of my career attire back when I wore blouses and tailored suits. So I sewed a lot of shirts with collars and collar bands and button front and all, all those little details. As you can see, there's a separate collar and collar band, which I think is a great feature. If you want to, you can eliminate the collar and just do a mandarin collar. The pattern piece for the collar, there's not a separate upper and lower piece. You just cut this two times. 
and add interfacing. There's interfacing here and interfacing here. It does not have a separate pattern piece for the front for the button and the button holes. You simply fold the fabric over one, two times and top stitch in place. Also, the pattern does not call for any interfacing here. I think you need to add interfacing. I did indeed add interfacing. And I'm not sure why they didn't include interfacing where you're going to put buttons and buttonholes. You need a little bit of structure there to support, if nothing else, to support your buttons. So I did indeed cut a narrow strip of interfacing and fused it on there before I folded the fabric and top stitched it in place. On the sleeves, you will notice there is no separate sleeve placket. You just stitch that sleeve seam to the marking, then you press it open and top stitch it in place for your little sleeve opening. I, it's easy, it works. I personally like the look of a sleeve placket. I think it just adds that little extra tailoring look, but it is more work and this works just fine. I do wanna point out in the instructions, step number five seems to me to be a mistake. I'm not sure it's necessary. I actually ended up skipping it. It also has an incomplete illustration. So if you get to that point and it seems confusing, I think if you just move on to the next step, you'll be okay. The fullness of this shirt comes from the back. You can see it has a separate yoke and that yoke comes slightly forward on your shoulder. And this is a single layer. So I was kind of surprised by that. I think depending on the fabric and the look you want, you may want to consider adding a second yoke so that you've got a nice finished facing inside. I did French seams throughout, so I wasn't real concerned about it. And I also wanted the lightness and the airiness of this voile fabric to remain that way throughout the top. You have two pleats that meet in the center of that yoke, and that's what's giving you the flair when you walk. I really like wearing this shirt when it's a little windy out because the wind kind of grabs it and it's just, it's just fun. As I mentioned, I did French seams throughout. The first seam I did was right here, side seam. Did it beautifully, perfect, loved it. And I was pressing it and went, oh, this isn't right. I did it inside out. So my French seam was on the outside of the top and that's not what you want. Because this foil fabric was so crisp and it did not ravel, it was really easy to do the French seams. I was surprised to see that they did not include instructions to run an e-stitch on the sleeve cap to ease it into the armhole. I went ahead and did that. I did the two rows of e-stitching to ease it in. And I'm going to tell you, I had trouble easing in the sleeve. I can't remember the last time I had difficulty easing in a sleeve into the armhole. So I'm not sure if something was off because I did French seams there. The sleeve drafting was just slightly off. I am going to sew this again and I think I will do it without French seams just because I want to know. And I will report on that when I do sew another one. When it came time to add the buttons, I pulled out these cute little disco ball buttons that I had in my stash. I thought this would be really fun. It would pull out the little silver dots that's in the boil fabric until I turned it around and saw warning lead. I don't know why I never noticed that before. So I'm not gonna put that on my cloth thing. At that point, I didn't wanna run out and look for buttons again. So I dug through my stash and I had these clear little floral buttons in my stash. I had eight of them, so I added them on. And as I'm sewing the last one, I realized that I actually need 12 buttons. I had looked at the wrong view when I looked at how many buttons I needed. I actually needed 12. So the cuffs have a different clear button and we're the only ones that are gonna know, right? Your last step on here is going to be hemming. And because you've got this great big curve, it's a high-low and the back has a curve, it's gonna take you some time. Be patient. There's a lot of hem there and I actually followed the instructions, which I don't normally do, and ran a basting stitch a quarter inch from the edge. And then when I pressed it over, I was able to ease in the fullness 
before top stitching it in place. Overall, it worked pretty good. It's not quite what I normally wear. It's definitely not a color I normally wear, but I do see that I would get a lot of use out of this in the upcoming spring and summer months. I'm really happy with how my big shirt turned out. But 1744 worked great to give me the look that I was going for. I do plan on sewing another one fairly soon. I want to sew it for the upcoming spring season. And I saw a designer version that I am inspired by. So now I'm looking for fabric and I hope to do a sew the look soon. What do you think about the big shirt trend? Something you might consider wearing? That's it for today. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the review, if you learned something or you just want to support my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. You won't miss future videos. And until next time, I hope you have a blessed day and happy sewing.